All right, well, it's the third hunt, I suppose. And this morning we're gonna go chase some of these muley boys around. Uh, the other day when Jake and Greg were out, they saw a bunch of muleys, a couple bucks, and uh, they were just kind of milling around in this basin. I think we're gonna get up there and try to glass for them, try to pick one out at first light, and then hopefully we can watch them bed down and go in for a stock. The only problem we might have this morning is it's pretty foggy. But we're gonna go in there anyway. I got a tag burn and a hole in my pocket, so. This Nebraska tag is good for a whitetail or a mule deer. And ever since my little encounter in North Dakota with that group of bucks, I've been a little bit fired up on mule deer. So we're gonna give it a try this morning and probably hunt whitetails in the evening. Tell him right now, he's moving to the oh, right. Oh yeah, I got him again. It's the same one from the other day. He's trying to move up to that next knob, I think, don't you? Yeah. Just crawl. Like take all morning because I don't think they're going anywhere as long as we don't spook any other deer. A dead tree in the tall tree. Oh, I see it. That's a good deer. Two of them. I think the buck pulled back behind that bush. Two of them. Uh, that's the two shooters that were down there. Four does and fawns, and then there was at least two shooters. Yep. Well, that's good. There's at least some consistency in the movement. I was trying to get to that bale. As I was as I was crawling up there, I noticed 
past one of the muleys was starting to come down into this drainage. That's cool. Yeah, it was. I feel good about hunting them in the future, though, because yeah. pattern. They literally just cross this basin, come out feeding that field, and then they head back. I'm assuming they're bedding in the next one over. I think right at that corner where they came in and out of. And the sweet thing is with all those hay bales and it being damp in the morning, like you can always move on them. Two times now we've seen them in, like, within bow range of the same spot. Right. Well, we had quite the eventful morning, much more than I expected, and. We came out here, it was real foggy, hard to see. And Jake just spotted the body of one of these bucks, exactly where he saw it the other day with Greg. The general theme was they all kind of walked by these two bushes here. I was way back there, so I couldn't get into position in time. But I think had I been in that bush there, or that bush there, I would have had a pretty close shot at him. Since we've seen him in this area so much, I think there's real good odds that if we set up in here in the morning, We'll have a shot at either one of those muley bucks or a whitetail buck. I got real excited there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Got a real nice muley buck at 70 yards, and I've never shot a muley. I'm really excited to come back in. We're supposed to have some weather over the next couple days, so that could make it interesting. But it could also help us out as far as moving around. I think what I'd like to do is get in early and set up on that bush. And ideally, they do exactly what they did this morning and the other day when Jake and Greg were out here just come off this hay field and work into the bottom. They even fed on that bush a little bit this morning. I think based on what we saw, we better just back out, leave this area alone, let these deer do their thing, probably give them the evening, and then we'll come back when the conditions are right. At this point, it's good to have a couple spots in the bank. I mean, we had a real close encounter with some whitetail bucks the other night in the saddle. I almost shot a nice one. Um, now we've got this spot where we can shoot a muley or a whitetail. So it's good to have those options and then we'll just decide which spot to go to based on the conditions. Greg and Dylan went out to glass this morning at a different piece, uh, so hopefully they're seeing something. They're having some luck. got down closer to this marsh. This is actually where I had the encounter with that tall eight pointer this summer when I was scouting. As soon as I got down here, glass down into the bottom, and in the creek, there was a little year and a half old buck. He got a drink and it popped up out of there and it's probably going to bed somewhere down below here. It's about 11.30 right now, and we got some good intel from what we saw up on that high point this morning. Pretty much all the deer that we ended up seeing, which was about 10 to 12 different deer, eventually funneled their way down into the tree line that extended out of the marsh. So we got some good information out of that, and then Dylan and I snuck in to this portion of the marsh right here, where I've seen bucks bedded in the past. Got snuck down into these cedars, and I've just been glassing and scouring 
all of this cover. If we can spot a buck bedded in the marsh or see one moving through this bottom and see him bed down, then we'll make a move in. The wind has picked up you know, consistent 10 to 12 miles an hour. So we definitely feel like we can make a stalk at this point. So that's why I feel like it's worth spending time out here glassing and just trying to lay eyes on something instead of being back at camp. Unfortunately, we're going to have to call it quits at some point here soon because there are some severe nasty storms moving in this area this afternoon and overnight. So, But going back to the encounter that I had with that 8-pointer when I was scouting in here this summer, you know, Nebraska has been a really good case study for us as far as seeing what happens or what can happen when you spook bucks. Uh, going back to 2017 when Zach and, and Jake and Brody hunted here the first time, they found a pocket of cover that they purposely wind bumped. They let their scent blow in there and actually bumped the buck out of there that Zach ended up shooting. We came in here a few days ago with the idea of wind bumping a spot real quick before we went out for an evening hunt. And I was blowing my scent with a south wind right into that bedding area and Jake and Brody were on the other side set up for a shot. We've wind bumped in the past, which is basically just letting our scent drift through a bedding area, alerting the deer enough to get them up out of their bed and hopefully slip out the back door. Two days later, Buck comes back into the same bedding area and Zach shoots him at 10 yards. Fast forward to 2018 and we got another example of a, a buck that got spooked out of a bedding area when um, Zach and Logan drove by. They ended up spooking several deer out of there and one of the bucks, a, a smaller two-year-old buck, ended up coming back that same evening. Zach almost got a shot at it. Then two days later, Zach went back in there and glass that bedding area and that same big 10 pointer was right back in there. I'm sure a lot of you have probably watched that hunt and if you haven't go back to the 2018 deer, deer tour check out that video and then go back to the 2017 season as well. So now going to the encounter that I had with that tall eight pointer when I was scouting in here I was working my way along the edge of the marsh with the wind in my face and I just happened to bump into a couple of bucks that were bedded along the creek because I had the wind in my face, they'd only heard me and maybe caught a glimpse of me. So when they jumped up, I got down and they stood there at about 20 yards and looked back in my direction trying to figure out what had happened. Got all kinds of footage of them. Eventually they bounded up and over the dam and then farther back into the marsh. So I took note of everything that I could, marked the location on Onyx and then slowly continued to work my way along the edge of the marsh and about an hour and a half later, I actually caught back up with that same buck about 300 yards farther back in the marsh. Actually, both of those same bucks were back in there. So an hour and a half later and 300 yards farther back in the marsh, those two bucks were completely relaxed and were up on their feet browsing. And I got to watch them for another probably 15 or 20 minutes or so, just comfortably moving around in that bedding area. I actually could have shot that, that tall eight pointer. It could have killed him twice in the same day, just simply by sneaking along the edge of the bedding area. So it's pretty rare to have that happen where you can actually find out how far a deer went, how they reacted, you know, a certain time after actually bumping them. And if you bump a deer, that's obviously the ideal way to where they don't smell you, they maybe just heard you, or maybe caught a glimpse of you, and you can get down and get out of sight under the right circumstances, you know, still hunting like that essentially is what I was doing that day. Just slowly working my way through the bedding area, uh, you know, essentially yielded two opportunities, what would be two opportunities had it been hunting season, at the same buck. So that may be something that we get into later in the hunt. We get the right weather, which we're supposed to have really breezy conditions later in the week where I could basically just repeat what I did that day I was scouting, just slowly still hunting my way through this bedding area, just trying to spot deer up on their feet or you know, possibly bedded, or if you bump into them under the right circumstances like that, when they just don't know what happened, you can get a shot at them. So we'll see how this crazy weather plays out here for the next couple of days, but this marshy bottom is one of the areas I definitely want to focus on.
Just had a little bit of fun there. Saw that doe working way across the top. Browsing along, just looped around backside. She got in the middle of this of this brush, would have gave a Dylan and I a perfect opportunity to sneak right up here within about 15 yards and could have shot her. Bleated at her. She was she was grunting or she was bleeding. I don't know if she was trying to locate her fawns or what. But I bleated back at her. Pulled her out into the open, about 15 yards away. Been a nice easy shot. That was fun. I mean if you don't shoot them, you can hone your stalking skills in situations like that. Anyways, we got more ground to cover and another bedding area to look into. Ride this thing out. I'm happy. I mean, we got no lights in here, but we're dry. We got tortilla chips. <laughs>